applause Let's amen all right happy sabbath family <clears throat> shabbat shalom as well all right i'm brother al this is my reader brother nehemiah coming to you on behalf of the vineyard of israel in the name of the most high yah god abraham isaac and jacob with a message on this true sabbath day the seventh day of the week all right we'd like to thank the most high yah first and foremost for uh, blessing us and giving us uh, peace and safety and comfort and uh, allowing us to see another Shabbat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praises. All right. So uh, with that being said, uh, we have a message today dealing with marriage. All right. Let me give you the title before I start a rant. All right. So the title of today's message is Marriage or a Defiled Bed. Sex doesn't make you married. Marriage or a defiled bed. Sex doesn't make you married. Say that again. Marriage or a defiled bed. Sex doesn't make you married. All right? All right. So these, these type of lessons are necessary every so often. Reason being is because, you know, it's popular teaching especially in Israel, that sex equal marriage. Well, if that's the case, you know, a lot of errors can be made, right? A lot of lives can be messed up, right? Uh, the Most High gave man, marriage is a covenant, right? Marriage is a covenant. Let me say that again. Marriage is a covenant. A covenant is an agreement between two or more parties, right? This is one, this is one of the most holy, if not the holiest covenant that Man can have between man and man, meaning mankind, meaning man and woman, not man. You know what I'm saying. Wow. Biblical marriage is man and woman. That's the only type of marriage we're dealing with, right? So this is the most holy covenant you can have. So do you think the most high would leave this covenant uh, to be looked upon as a, as a part where uh, it can be so carelessly done to the point where sex can make you marry. No. No, you have to, it, 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 you know, covenant making in the ancient East was so, uh, so, so crucial. Held a high value. Right. They held it in high esteem and high value. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like how it is now. Right. Right. It's not like how, because now people can give their word and break it. No big deal. It wasn't like that back when the Most High was giving these people these rules and regulations and guidelines to go by. Mm -hmm. Covenant making, you put your word on the line. The word is all that you have, right? Integrity, that's a big thing with the Most High. So this is why he made, so it's, it's steps. In other words, when we, we go back and check out ancient covenant, it's steps in order to enter into ancient covenant. So marriage is no different. It's the most holy one. It can't be entered into with just having sex, No. And we're going to show you today, that's, that, that's not marriage. That's what the Bible calls a defiled bed. Fornication, adultery, hope, whoremonging, those type of things. That's what that is. Marriage with, uh, I mean, sex with no covenant is fornication, adultery, that type of thing. You have to have, be joined, have a covenant, right? An agreement, right? Because, you know, Israel, they, they go wild. They, they, they say every time you have sex, you're married. That's a lie. You're a fornicator or whatever the case may be. Fornication or adultery, that's what you are. Right? But marriage is an honorable thing, especially with the Most High, so much so that he married Israel because when you marry somebody, you're trading places or you're coming one. If you're the man, you're giving, you making an agreement, you find that person satisfying enough to the point where you give them your name. Your name is all you have. It's highly esteemed. It's more to be desired than silver and gold, a good name. So it's not, the Most High is not going to let you enter into a co covenant as sacred as marriage just by having sex. No. 
See, that's lust, and that's, beast. that, that's, that's what beasts do. Right? That's un- unreasonable. That's unresponsible. Right? Marriage is for responsible individuals. And it's an honorable thing that most I gave it to man so that you can keep the creation going. Keep the name rolling, right? But man, that's messed it up so much so we've lowered it in value so much so that we say sex is marriage. And we use the Bible to justify. That's an error. It's covenant making all throughout the Bible. Marriage is the ultimate covenant. You got to have a covenant. You got to have witnesses. In the Hebraic law, right? What does it tell you? Every word is what? Established by what? Two or or three or more witnesses. Right? Two or more witnesses. You got to need a mediator. So you can't take nobody off in a back room and just uh, have sex and say, y'all married. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. Ain't no agreement. Ain't no witnesses. Right? There's nothing to tie you to that person except that lust that both of y'all shared right. at that point in time. And that lust, that's an error. So we're going to open this thing up real quick. We're going to jump right into it. Matt, uh, Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. We're going to see time and time again that the Bible, reasoning with the scriptures will let you know that just because you sleep with somebody, that don't make you mad. Marriage is honorable. All ty- other types of whoredom, you'll be punished and judged for that. Because you, that's how people mess up the creation. Single family homes, that's how they created. You didn't have a covenant. You didn't have an agreement. You just went out and started lusting. Right? And now you're bringing other people into the world without any intentions of taking care of them. You're messing up. You don't give them no set of core values. So what do you think they're going to be? Hellenized. Right, a broken family create a Hellenized community, which mm-hmm. create a Hellenized world. Yep. And that's what we got. But it wasn't never supposed to be so. Marriage is the most honorable thing. Yes, sir. That's why you're supposed to go to the person's family. Right? You're supposed to have enough respect for yourself and that person and their family to go to that father or whoever it is that's going to give them away and ask for that person, uh, so you know what they're going to do. In other words, it shows you that you've been approved by the family. See, people don't do that now because we don't have integrity. Mm-hmm. We, sneak, we try to come around the backside. No, you ain't. We go tell the parents, oh, yeah, we married. We married. Right. <laughs> right? You, no. Yeah. We, we act like that's our seed. Right. No, that child, that's the father's seed. Mm-hmm. The father, we're going to see that the father has right to... Uh, Say no, disannul that marriage. Yep. Right? So that's why you can't stri- stri- strictly have sex and say you're married. Mm-hmm. If that father don't approve of you, you say, hey, boy, ain't nothing. No. No, you, ma- you can't marry his daughter. Mm-hmm. See, nowadays it's backwards. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. We need to keep it the same. People need to get ba- black eyes nowadays. Yeah. I'm just saying, we, got, yeah. we need to be approved. A stamp yeah. of approval. Right. A black eye is a stamp of rejection. You hear me? <laughs> That's what we dish it out. Yeah. But we, the, the older generation, we already done messed it up. Just to the younger generation. Y'all got a chance to actually get this thing right and do this stuff with some integrity. Right. Right. So we can start trying to reverse this uh, foolishness mm-hmm. that we got going on, this lust. And all that. we need to get to the scripture. Hebrews 13. Mm-hmm. I talked enough. Hebrews 13. But we're going to show you, if we can, how serious they covenant making uh, was. Right? Once we get uh, later on into the lesson, this we do at the, at the most high permit. So we got about a good three hours today. Buckle up. You know what I'm just saying? Verse 4. Hebrew. What's, how long for a minute? What are you laughing at? <laughs> three hours. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and 4, hearken to the scripture. Marriage is honorable in, in all. That's, and that's in, in the sight of the most high Yah, which is who, I, who we should be trying to please above all. So marriage is honorable to all. So we should do it his way. Right? Okay. Go ahead. And the bed undefiled. And the bed undefiled. This is what he gave Adam Eve for. To repopulate the earth. Right? So he said it's under, the bed is undefiled. Go ahead. But whoremongers and adulterers, Yah will judge. And it's speaking undefiled in, in the context of 
Whoremonging and adultery, not what you, uh, we, I'm not interested in what you do in your bed right now, right? But in the context of uh, ho- all type of whoredoms, right? Marriage compared to whoredom, which is, I mean, an idolat- I mean, adultery and fornication, marriage is honorable, while those things are what defile the bed. You understand what, what the Bible is telling us? Mm-hmm. Fornication defiles the bed. You're not, so you're not married by uh, having sex without a covenant. You're a fornicator or a whoremonger, as the Bible uh, put it. Or if you're married, ha- having sex with one that's married, you're an adulterer. Right? That's how it is. What happened? Read that again, sorry. Marriage is honorable in all. That's right. And the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, y'all will judge. Y'all going to judge you see that? Mm-hmm. So for these acts, whoremonging, adulterous, you fall into the judgment of the Most High Yah. You already know what that judgment is. You ain't got a guess. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. So marriage don't come by sex. Sex don't equal marriage. Sex was supposed to seal the covenant. Right. One of the... St- the, uh, uh, the, one of the steps of the covenant was uh, blood. And blood is what seals it. And that's what the, uh, the sex was supposed to produce if we, d- if we d- did it right, the most high way. It was supposed to be a token. A token or a seal or a sign. That's what it was supposed to be. Confirmation, a witness, right? Go, uh, what, what did I tell you? First Corinthians 1 and chapter 2. No, First Corinthians 7 and seven. 1. One through four, and then we'll read eight through nine. It's bad teaching to say that uh, sex equal marriage. That's just lust. Verse one, hearken to the scripture. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. That's right. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid what? Fornication. How can you fornicate if sex is marriage? Huh? I'm just, I'm confused. How, 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 do, how does that work? You confused too, I see, right? It's because it ain't, that ain't how it is. Go ahead. Let every man have his own wife. Let every man have his own wife. And let, let every, every, every woman have her own husband. Let every woman have her own husband. And he said, you do this in order to what? avoid fornication. fornication. Yes. So just like Hebrews 13 and 4 would tell us, marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. So to avoid fornication or defiling the bed, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. husband. Simple and plain. We can go. We done. Let's go. Right? Shabbat shalom. <laughs> huh? We're done. That's the point. Point proven, right? Nah, okay. Go keep rolling then. Let the husband render unto the wife due do bene- benevolence. Yes. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. Now, why? Because the two are one. You're no longer your own. See, in, in a, one of the things in the ancient covenant making, one of the steps is you join to that person and you become that person. So you're no longer an individual. Right. The two of y'all have become one being or of one mind. That's right. Right? Go ahead. Four. Yes. The wife have not power of our own body. You see that? But the husband. Uh-huh. And likewise, also, the husband have not power of his own See, body. husbands don't be want to hear this. They just want to read the first half, you dig? They don't be want to hear this, the second half. They be talking about they got headaches, too. <laughs> just, they got headaches. It's new age. They got headaches. And go, uh, verse 8, you finish that verse? Have not power of his own body, but the wife. Because the husband be beating with their wives over the scriptures. I, it's just, see, that's what you see. All right, go ahead. Eight. And I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. That's the truth. He's he, he trying to teach you how not to mess up the creation more than it already is. He said, if you could withhold yourself or you could do without, it's better for you to remain in that state. But he's going to tell you, most people can't, right? He just, hey, we just, most people ain't got the power. Well, watch what they're about to say. But if they cannot contain, you see that? let them marry. If they cannot contain, let them marry. Go ahead and sleep around. 
Let them marry. Just have sex. You marry. Let them marry. Yeah. Go ahead. For it is better to marry than to burn. It's better what? To marry than to burn. And they talking about burning that dust. Huh? You already know you're going to get the judgment. But it's better to marry and the bed be undefiled than you just to burn in that lust and keep defiling bed after bed after bed. Point blank. It's better to marry than to do that. So we got to think, of, when you come into the covenant with y'all, you got to think bigger than yourself. You got to think in terms of the whole creation and how, what you can do to not mess it up. Right? Deuteronomy 22. So let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So that the bed don't be defiled. It's better to marry than to burn. Whoremongers and adulterers, y'all will judge. Deuteronomy 22. Hold on, let me get them. One too many things at one time. We're going to pick it up at uh, verse 21 just to get a point, and then we're going to uh, read down a little bit. But right now, give me verse 21. Hearken to the scripture. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die. Now, why would they do that? We're going to bring the damsel out of the father's house. And the men of the city going to stone her with stones. What's the point? Go ahead. Because she hath brought folly into Israel. Because she hath did something honorable. Brought folly in Israel. How did she wrought folly in Israel, though? To play the whore in her father's house. What? To play the whore in her father's house. So how can she play the whore if she have sex and they marry? Hmm. Hmm? I'm confused. She played the whore. She didn't get married, but she had sex. It's not adding up. They finna stone her. I thought marriage was honor, but I thought God was going to judge the whore monger and the adulteress. Well, she being judged. Instead of being considered marriage, I mean, instead of being considered marriage, she's considered the to whore. have played the harlot. Mm -hmm. Whore monger. God will judge. So you see what's going on. Don't fall for that bad teaching. Right? People ain't paying attention to the scripture. They running too fast. They confusing people. That stuff is confusion. Mm -hmm. it, uh, even in our society, the Gentile society teach us better than that. So you going to try to tell me the Bible don't teach better than the Gentile? Come on now. got to wake up. We sleep out here. We sleep out here. Let's, let's, let's go up to verse 13 real quick. You want to finish in the one? Oh, you didn't finish? Yeah, go ahead. Because she hath brought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shalt thou put evil away from among you. So you can see, sex don't equal marriage. It's considered playing the harlot, playing the whore. Right? That's why I said whoremongers, God would judge. But we fit, he call it evil. We finna put it right, we finna put this evil out in Israel. Because it leads it leads to messed up homes. Mm. Bad decisions, like abortions. You're not responsible. You want to abort. Mm -hmm. But funny thing is, you wouldn't want nobody to abort you. Yep. You ain't keeping the law. Lord, our neighbors, I said, how you keeping the law? You want abortion. Let's go up to 13. 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her mm -hmm. and give occasions of speech against her right. and bring up an evil name upon her and say, yes. I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Right, because when you find her a maid, it should be tokens. Right. Right. Of blood. The, right. Tokens mm -hmm. of blood, meaning you've entered into the covenant and sealed it with the blood. Yes. See, that's what sex does. Mm -hmm. After the agreement, after the marriage, after the whole thing is done correctly, the sex seal or the intercourse seals the marriage. Right. Right. And if she's a virgin like she's supposed to, it's supposed to be blood on the sheets. So you take them to give them to the father. That's the so token that the uh, maid was a virgin. So mm -hmm. that's the token that she didn't play the harlot mm -hmm. in her father's house. That's the token that she's worth the price of the dowry that he right. gave her. Mm -hmm. That he had to pay. Because the price of the dowry is part of making an agreement right. or a covenant. 
Right? This thing is, most I tell us, let everything be done decently and in order. And, in order. Yes, and then when it comes to marriage, how we fall for the okie doke? That sex equal marriage. Lust. But you don't. You got wise up. So this is what we're getting out of here. The tokens of virginity. That's what seals the deal, right? Hearken to the scriptures. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. Right, because remember, the husband is trying to bring an evil name. He wants a divorce. Right. He's saying he found something unclean within her. Right, so he's talking about she ain't a maid or a virgin. So the mother and the father, they got proof. How do they have proof? Because with the, the, uh, the covenant has been sealed and it was blood on the sheets, and that's the proof. Right. So he's going to get it, he's going to bring it. Right? This is proof against the accusation so that they can't condemn her unjustly. Because this is a matter of death. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. 16. We, we can't the... lead this to word of mouth. Right. People can get killed. No, we got to have proof. Because people be saying anything. Yep. We need proof. Go ahead. 16. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. You see that? Because look, he trying to bring an evil name. Remember we, we briefly discussed about the name? Yeah. The na your name is a big deal. That's what you work for. Mm -hmm. That's what you're known by. Your reputation. Your name. One and the same. Right. And now he's trying to damage the name. Which or would, slander. Which would damage her father's name. Exactly. Well. Yes. Right. Because she's supposed to be a virgin until she leave her father's house. Mm -hmm. What verse? 16? 17. Go ahead. And lo, he hated, excuse me, and lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. Right. So he can't just go and marry. He said, there got to be a reason. He said, I found not thy daughter a maid. And so, yet these are the clean. tokens of my daughter's virginity. So I got the proof that and, the covenant was sealed. And they and, shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And what? And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Right, because he lied. Yep. Right, we got the proof. He lied just trying to eat, weasel his way out of it. Right. So let's see if the Lord let him off the hook. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver. Double the price. And give them unto the father of the damsel. That's right. Because he hath brought up an evil name upon the virgin of Israel. So when the most I tell you don't take my name in vain, if he go to these lengths on, on, on this portion, how, how do you think he feel when you take his name in vain? A uh, hundred times. You, you think he playing? A hundred times worse. So when you, because you made a covenant with the most high. Yes, sir. Just like right here. Yes, sir. The man made a covenant with this woman. Right. And you sealed it and you knew and you still try to sneak a weasel out of it. Right? But that's why we had to have proof. We sealing the deal. Matter of fact, let's drop down. Uh, did you finish that nah, verse? Go at ahead. The bottom of 19. And shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. That's right. Just because you feel some type of way, you better get your act together. Right. Right now you're acting like a lemon. You better make some lemonade. Yeah. Right? So he said, you can't put her away. Right? In other words, what the Most High is doing, he holding you to your word. Yeah, you made a vow. Accountable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm holding you to it. You shouldn't know. When he, he said it's better to not to make a vow than make a vow and don't keep yeah, it, right? Yeah, that's right. So you think he's going to let the man out? No. Nah. He made him eat that. Uh, that's what you chose. Mm -hmm. Right? So now let's drop down a bit. Same chapter. Pick it up at verse 28. So this is not a light thing. We just made light over here, light of it over here in the West. Yeah. In other nations. Marriage has become a joke. Mm hmm But in the eyes of the most high, it's honorable. And we should be looking at things through the lens of the most high. That's right. And sleeping with somebody before you get an agreement is not honorable. It's the way of the world. Is that the truth? It's fact. Don't fall with okie doke. What verse? 28? 28. Yes. Hearken to the scripture. If a man finds a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed. Now, betrothed means espoused or engaged, like we would say over here. So if he find a virgin, she not engaged. And lay hold on her mm -hmm. and lie with her, and they be found. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Right. Why? Because he hath humbled her. Yeah. And he may not put her away all his days. Yeah. 
That's how it's supposed to go. If he found one is not uh, engaged. But the father still have the right to say yay or nay. Right? But you see, he still have to pay or come up with, uh, we're going to call it the agreement money, which mm -hmm. is called a dowry. Right. So look what it said. If a man find a damsel, that father, is a verse. Yeah. If a man lay with her, uh, shall give the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. And she shall be his wife, mm -hmm. because he hath humbled her, and he may not put her away in all his days. Right. Now, this one say, too, in verse 28, if he take the virgin, which is not his wife, and lay hold on her, and they be found, mm -hmm. meaning somebody find out about it, then you got to do that. Right? Other than that, you just committing fornication. Right? But let's see Exodus 16, because the father can say yes or no. Exodus 16, 22, Exodus 22 and 16. Exodus 22, hold on, let me find one more thing right quick. Exodus 22. Bad reception over there. Exodus 22. In uh, verse 16, let me find this one more thing right quick. Go ahead. Okay. You there? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie down with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. That's right. Endow her to be his wife. Why? If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Mm -hmm. So the father can disannul it. He can say no. But that man still got to pay that money. So look what he said. If a man entice... Right? Mm -hmm. right if he entice a maid... That is not betrothed mm -hmm, and not lie, like. lie with her... right? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Right. So endow would mean like to bargain for. Mm -hmm. Right. You can try to bargain for or try to make an agreement for her to be your wife. Mm -hmm. But it gotta, you got to go get approval. Watch what he going to say. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Right. And she's still not his wife. But they already had sex. They should be married. Hmm? Not if the father say no. Hmm. Numbers 30th chapter. Because the man enticed the woman. But she didn't refuse. Yet and still, the father had a final say so. Numbers 30. So, huh. so that man was out of order. The man was out of order. He enticed it, yeah. Yeah, instead of going to the father. Instead person. of going to the father, the yeah. So he he tried to sneak around and do it. He could have saved that little money. Yeah. He, the American <laughs> way. Huh? Yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. Right? Numbers 30. He going to try to sleep with his daughter before he get approval mm -hmm. and entice her. So he probably slick talked her. She went for it. Mm -hmm. But then still, the father got the final say. So do sex equal marriage in that instance? No. Nah. Mm -hmm. Numbers 30 and 1. Harker to the scripture. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which... The Most High hath commanded. This is the thing which the Most High hath commanded, yes. If, if a man vow a vow unto the Most High, mm -hmm. or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. So just think about the instance that we just read, when he enticed the uh, virgin to be his wife, and he hated her, and he tried to bring an evil name upon her so he can weasel out of the marriage. Mm -hmm. The Most right. High made him stick, stick to that, didn't he? Yes, sir. Because you shouldn't have never said, I do. Yeah, make that vow. So you made the vow. Mm -hmm. Marriage which is a covenant or an agreement, which is the same as marriage. Right. 
Right? Mm-hmm. So he made that. You got to stick to it. You got to eat that. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And this is why you got, because in, in, in the old times, it was steps. It was steps to making the covenant. Mm-hmm. Number one was like, count the cost. Yeah. Consider the cost beforehand. Yeah. So people not just jumping into stuff. Right. Because you making lifelong decisions here. Yeah. Hmm? So this may force you to make proper planning. Exactly. You know what this is? So when the Most High gave us marriage in the beginning, dealing with Adam and Eve, the first commandments he gave them was be fruitful mm-hmm. and then multiply. Yeah. Most people think that's talking about strictly dealing with uh, multiplying with as in having babies. Right. No, he's talking about being fruitful first. Mm-hmm. And fruitful, you got to get to know somebody. Mm-hmm. You got to uh, be intimate, not laying, mm-hmm. but intimate with a relationship with them. Right. To know what you can do and know what they can give you. Know the blessings and the curses of the situation and each other. Know the family background. At least know the last name. We're doing bad out here today. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. So you got to be fruitful. You got to deal with that person so that you can, they can provoke you and you can possess. And both of y'all can possess the fruits of the spirit. That's right. That's being fruitful. You handle that person or that relationship with love and joy and peace and long. So once you got that stuff together, then you can multiply. You good. Right. You proving yourself responsible. You laid a good now you can be in charge of another life. That's right. That's what you're bringing into the world. Right? Another life. And now if you're unfruitful and you bring another life into the world... Guess what you just created? Chaos. 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 Mm-hmm. An- another generation. life that's unfruitful. Mm-hmm. Another generation that's unfruitful. The most high don't want, he's not interested. Mm-hmm. Not interested. We need to do it right. And that's why I tell you be fruitful first. See, but the problem is everybody is burning. Right? Remember, he said it's better to marry than to burn. Everybody is burning in that lust. People can't wait. Hmm? You're six years old. you talking about you got a girlfriend. <laughs> you don't even know what you want to do when you grow up. You don't even know who you are. And that's the problem with a lot of marriages. Man. People don't even know who they are. And then you go and join yourself. Because that's what you're doing. with a, You're joining yourself. You're combining two lives into one. Mm-hmm. And people may not even like. You might not even like that person like you thought. Mm-hmm. You got to get past the lust. You got to get past the beauty. You have to get past... On a foundation, right? We need fruitful marriages. You got enough garbage out here. Hmm? Damn. So the most high going to make you eat those words. Because that's all you have when you come into the world, a voice. So you tied to your word. Remember he told us in a, in a lesson a couple weeks ago, by your words, you're going to be condemned. Mm-hmm. Or by your words, you'll be justified. By your words. You got to be stand up. Stand up, God. Stand up, women. What happened? Three. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Most High and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and if her father hear her vow and her bond were with, she said she had bound, bond, bound. bound her soul, yes. and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand. Right. Then, so let's just say she bound herself to, we're going to deal with, with marriage. Right. Mm-hmm. She bound herself to a nobody, a scrub. And her father, he analyzing the old boy. He know he's scrubbing. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But she like him because she lusted. But the mm-hmm. father is thinking rationally. Mm-hmm. He like, no, I'm not giving my daughter that because if that joins to you, that's what you're going to become. You're going to take down the family name. You're going to mess up the whole game. Right? Out of control. So he can disannul. That's how he can disannul that marriage. Right? Even though the old boy enticed and they already know. Man, get that out of here. You're going to do this a little differently. right? My, I already had somebody that was, had integrity in my, my daughter. Mm. I can't give her to you. Mm. What tribe you from? <laughs> nah, skip that. Go ahead. But that's how it goes. You know why it's like that? Because that's the father's seed. Mm-hmm. People think it's it different now. But the father's the one that carry the seed. Whatever come out of him, that's his. You're going to just come to me and tell me, you're going to marry him. Boy, say, black eye, you, 
Mm-hmm. You, you creeping up on a black eye. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's black. Ain't no even no need of talking. Mm-hmm. We gonna go on and go in your eye. Go, go ahead. Metaphor. Yes. Then all her vows shall stand in every bond. And then, we- hold on, I'm going to say it. Then, <laughs> behind closed door, we got to go on and go in the door. I too. <laughs> Black out loud together. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. In every bond where we, she had bound, her soul shall stand. Every what? That's if he hold his peace. Yeah. So that's if he agree with If he agree, I might like to do it. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. You look like you might be a little worthy on the surface anyway. But yeah. <laughs> so he, 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 if he hold his peace, he don't say nothing, yeah. it's going to stand. Yeah. God don't pay the little money. It's agreed. Right. Right. Go ahead. Five. Uh huh. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she had bound her soul shall stand. See that? No. It's nothing. Yeah. Right. Huh? Right. Cause he know best. He ain't got all this experience and, and gray hair for nothing. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. And Yahuwah shall forgive her. You see that? Yahuwah shall forgive her. Mm-hmm. Parker to the scripture. Because her father disallowed her. That's the truth. Her father said no. He disallowed that. Mm-hmm. You know what that is? That's grace. Yeah. On the cool, that's protection yeah. in the law for that woman. Mm-hmm. Cause she really, after she finished that lust, she really don't know what she in for. Right. Huh? Mm-hmm. That man could be straight from hell. Yeah. I know he is, cause he ain't come to the father. Mm-hmm. Man. He ain't even that. Look <laughs> at what people think about themselves. Yeah. I don't even think enough about myself where I can go to your father and ask him. Yeah. So how he gonna respect you? Mm-hmm. See, we done messed it up. I generate. We don't. We wasted. We gotta try to help the other right. do it right. Yeah. Right. So, Let's go to Genesis thirty-four. Sex don't equal marriage. This ain't it's even hard to see. Genesis thirty-four. What's going on with this day in the day? You say one. Test. This this one still work when you move around now. I'm trying to stay in one spot. Genesis 34. Keep on moving my podium. Oh yeah, I try to figure out what I'm doing. I have to let you know what I'm doing so you knock off at least some of that weirdness off your look. Right. <laughs> Y'all looking at me weird. I <laughs> relax now. Genesis 34. Pick it up at verse one. Genesis 34 and 1. Hearken to the scripture. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, mm-hmm. went out to see the daughters of the land. Right. So this is Jacob's daughter. Right? Mm-hmm. Dinah or Dina. Go ahead. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and he lay with her. You see what he did? We've been reading laws that tell us how to deal with this, right? Mm-hmm. So he yep. took her. And he lay la- with her. Yes. And defiled her. No, they married her. And defiled her. Hold on, I'm confused. Hebrews 13 and 4 right quick. Hold that spot. I'm confused. You try to get it right. He took her and he lay with her and he defiled her. I thought they was married. Should have been honorable. They lay together. Is that the truth? Mm-hmm. They should be married. Should be honorable. So let's see what they call it. Hebrews 13, verse 4, hearken to the scripture. Marriage is honorable and all. So and why don't the scripture say that in verse 4 Genesis, in Genesis 34? Because they were married. Exactly. They laid together, but they weren't married. So it can't say it's honorable. But what it can say is, what happened? Keep going. But whoremongers and adulterers, y'all will judge. So, so the marriage bed is undefiled. Mm-hmm. But whoremongers and adulterers, God or y'all will judge. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to Genesis 34. Genesis 34. Pick it up at where you leave our verse 2. Verse 4. What's what? the verse? 
I mean, my two, bad. Verse two. All right, we'll go go ahead. Two. And when Shek and when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. You see that? That mean they ain't married. Mm -hmm. It's no covenant. There's no agreement. Mm -hmm. It's not official. There's no witnesses. There's no witnesses. Every fact is established by two or more witnesses. So he defiled her. So how can sex equal marriage? And I ain't trying to, don't come talking about he a stranger. So no, nah, talking about it don't apply because the Bible tell you one law for the stranger and yeah, one law for, for the homeborn. Home That's big facts. So don't, 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 don't come with that left hand stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's stick to what the scripture that We're going to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. the, the fact of the matter is they're not married even though they've had sex. Right? He, but he did defile her. Just like the other scripture said, she played the whore in her father's house. Oh, y'all laughing at my, my words? Oh, they look strong? Okay. Go ahead. Three. And his soul clave unto Dinah. He loved her. Go ahead. The daughter of Jacob. Yes. And he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father, Hamor, saying, get me this damsel to wife. Hold on for a minute. What? I thought that already was his wife. Get me this damsel to wife. Hmm. This is amazing. They ain't married. Get me this damsel to wife. So now he want to come and do it right. Mm. But you already messed up the process. Now maybe if you would have come correctly the first time, it wouldn't have been as big of an issue. Right? You already got a little clout. You, you the prince of the land maybe. Uh, you know, Prince had a little different education too, so okay, maybe uh, you're a stranger, but we might, I don't know. No, it's we're more, not doing that. but the point is, you didn't do it right. He pretty much don't have no hope. Right, go ahead. Five, and Jacob heard that he had to foul Dinah, his daughter. So you got to think about the mindset of these people. These are ancient people out of Eastern lands. they mindset is different than mm -hmm. ours. So, Covenant making is a very serious yeah. process. Yeah. It's held in high esteem. It's not like how it is now. Mm -hmm. We just go make contracts and covenants and break yeah. them. It's because we don't have integrity. And she defiled her father's name when she right. did this too. Everybody is so individual that you don't even care about your name pretty much. Mm. You don't even care about the fact that that's somebody else's name that he gave to you. Right. That was your father. That's your father's name. That's the family name. A name ain't nothing to us no more. Nah. Hmm? Yeah. They value honor. We got to get back. Exactly. They value honor. Mm hmm. We don't even spend our time in things that's honorable. Nah. Disrespect, neglect. Mm hmm. Things that defile. That's what we spend all our time in. And we spend our time in these defiled things like they actually good for us. Sin and a shame. And but we be want we be looking for good results. That ain't that funny? Mm -hmm. You spending your time in dirt and you looking for something good. Where my blessings at? You gave them away. Let's finish. What verse? Five. Man? Yes. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. So how you think he feel? This my what? what? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got the audacity. Go ahead. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. Right. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. What they communing for? They trying to make an agreement. Mm -hmm. Right. Trying to come up with an agreement. If it wasn't, if the uh, if the agreement wasn't necessary, they would already be married. Right. But marriage is first. The intercourse is what seals the covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did it backwards here. Right. And now they got to go and try to establish an agreement. Mm -hmm. And who got the final say-so? The father. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, go ahead. Seven. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved. And they were very wroth. Because he had wrathfully folly. He had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter. Oh, he married her. With lying with Jacob's daughter, 
which thing ought not to be done. You see that? The actual marriage is first. Marriage is before sex. I mean, marriage, yeah. Sex don't make you mad. Mm-hmm. You can see that. Drop down to verse um, 11. 11, and Shechem said unto her father and unto her brethren, let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me, I will give. Say, whatever, let's let me find favor in your sight. Whatever, because he want to, uh, they trying to agree, uh, make an agreement or an arrangement. He said, whatever you want, we'll give it. Go ahead. 12, ask me never so much da- dowry and gift, and I will give according as ye shall say unto me. He said, but, whatever you ask me, I'll give it to you. No matter the cost. Right, this is the agreement. Mm-hmm. Right, come on. But give me the damsel to wife. In exchange. All right? Give me the downs of the wife. Let's drop down to verse 30. Verse 30. And Jacob and Simeon and Levi, ye have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me. Oh, you know what? I'll stop you prematurely. Mm-hmm. Go back to 13. 13. Yes, sir. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, deceitfully, and said, Because he had defiled Dinah, their sister, and they said unto them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, mm-hmm. but that were a reproach unto us. Say, we can't, that's a, they're a, a, a trouble unto us. We can't give our daughter to this one that's uh, uncircumcised, but not it, of our... Go ahead. But in this will we consent unto you. Mm-hmm. This will we agree to you. Go ahead. If ye will be as we be, mm-hmm. that every male of you be circumcised, then will we give our daughters unto you. Look at that. We have to actually give the daughter away. Mm-hmm. We have to make, make an actual agreement. So if you become as one with, like we are with us, then we can uh, be of one accord. Then we'll agree. And it's right. by circumcision. So this covenant is being made by blood as well. Exactly. Yeah. Good point. Go ahead. 16. Then we will give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. You see that? One people. That's it. The two shall become one. Mm-hmm. If, But, you know, it has to be an agreement. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. 17. But if ye will not hearken unto us to be circumcised, then will we take our daughter and we will be gone. Go and ahead. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. They was cool with that. Yeah. All right, well, we'll do it. Go ahead. And the young man deferred not to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter. Right, and that's the key. Sisters. If that man delight in you, you, he'll do it. He going to go, yeah. Right. If he don't, he going to treat you like a whore. Mm-hmm. Sex without a contract, without an agreement, and that's all he want. Mm-hmm. Because if he really delight in you, he will, he'll, he'll do what's honorable. Mm-hmm. If not, <laughs> you know what it is. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And the young man deferred not to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. Mm. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came unto the gate of their city and communed with the men of their city, saying, These men are peaceable with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade therein. For, for the land, behold, it is large enough for them. Let us take our daughters to us. Let let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Mm -hmm. Only herein will the men consent unto us for to dwell with us, to be one people. If every every male among us be circumcised, as they are circumcised. That's the truth. So they was they was inclined to do it. Verse twenty five. Go ahead. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. Look, they can't get past that anger. This is how uh, terrible of a thing that is. You defile our... I can't even let that ride. Look, I, heard, I know what they said we're going to make. Listen, I'm not trying to hear none of that. You dealt with our sister as a yeah. as a whore. Yeah. Man, no, no. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Y'all can't let it ride. The other brothers might be cool. Yeah. We got two outcasts here. They hearing none of it. Mm-hmm. Hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. 26. Yes. And they slew Hamor and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. You see what? <laughs> it would seem like they playing? Nah. Go ahead. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. The boy took down a whole city. Mm-hmm. Due to fornication. Yeah, it's not a drill. It's for real. Go ahead. <laughs> they took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which is what was in the city and that which was in the field. And all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives they took captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. They took everything. Go ahead. And Jacob, had, and Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me to make uh, to stink. You had troubled me to make to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. In other words, you brought uh, shame upon my, my name. name. Yep. Name is important. Mm-hmm. So you got to ask yourself. How are you dealing with your name? How important is yours? Right. Go ahead. And I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, mm-hmm. and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. Look what they reply is. Go ahead. And they said, should he deal with our sister as in harlot? You see that? That's with a wife? Man. Should he as deal with, with our sister as with a wife? That's with a harlot. So be it. That's how it is. You ain't dealing with our sister like that, though. Sex without marriage. Man. Right. Sex without a covenant is whoredom. You got to have a covenant. Sex don't make you married. Yeah. Be a fornicator or an adulterer. That's it. Bed is defiled. In the eyes of the Most High, you got to have a covenant or an agreement. We be acting like God don't have no integrity. Right. Hmm? He trying to teach us how to get integrity. He trying to teach us how to live peaceably. Right. We, which we want none of. Right? He trying to teach us how to get an honorable name, which we want no parts of. We always want to do stuff our way. Let's go look at Jacob. Genesis 29. Back up to the 29th chapter. Good where people run. He talking about... Uh, See, Jacob was married to Leah by just having sex. Is that the case? Let's go see what the scriptures say. We're going to start at verse 14. We got to do a little reading today, but I don't like to skip that much. 14 through 30. Genesis 29, verse 14. Hearken to the scripture. And they been said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Right. And he abode with them with him a space of a month. Right. So Jacob, he went out of, uh, of his land into the land of the people of the east. That's verse 1. Right. So he's not in his own land. Mm-hmm. Right. He's in the land of Laban, which is uh, he's still of the same bloodline. Right. But he, he in Laban's land. So he said, you, you bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You my people. Go ahead. Well, 15. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for nothing? Now look, he asked, why she said, You my brother. Shall you serve me without getting paid for nothing, without any wages? Go ahead. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? He said, What you want your wages to be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Right, he had two daughters, Leah, Rachel. Go ahead. Leah was tender eyed, mm-hmm. but Rachel was beautiful and well favored. Mm-hmm. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. You said, Agree me, right? Mm-hmm. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. So now this is a mutual agreement. Yes, sir. It's just like we're shaking hands. Yep. We're agreeing. Right. Which is still even equal to a written agreement. Mm-hmm. This is what they agreed on. Mm-hmm. I'll work for you if you let me wife your daughter, Rachel. Mm -hmm. No sweat. Mm -hmm. It's better I give her to you than another man. Hearken to the script. And Jacob 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days. So he fulfilled his obligation. Mm -hmm. True enough. He said it. They seemed but a few days. For the love he had to her. That's the truth. Hearken to the script. And Jacob said unto Laban, 
give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Mm-hmm. Give and me the, my wife, my days are fulfilled. That he I may ca- go in unto her. Right. So look what he called his wife before the actual land together. Yeah. Because he fulfilled the agreement. Yeah. Hmm? Now watch what's going to happen. It's the, go ahead. 22. When Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening. Now that- look what he did. This is a wedding feast. Right? A banquet. Gathered everybody. So it's witnesses here. Right? 22. Uh huh. Go ahead. Three again. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his wife, I mean, excuse me, his daughter, and brought her to him. Now, and this is his eldest daughter. Mm-hmm. So Laban <laughs> took Leah, his eldest daughter, and did what? Brought her to and Jacob. Went, and he went in unto her. Right. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah, his maid and her maid. Mm hmm. So Laban, came, yes. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. Leah. So he, they thought he thought the agreement was uh was 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 Rachel. sealed, right? He knew it was for Rachel, but he thought Leah was Rachel, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So the intent was uh, we married, mm-hmm. right? But go ahead, I'm gonna show you something different. Go ahead. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah, and he said to Laban, "What is this thou hast done unto me?" Now look, remember who had the uh, who had the right to uh, disannul the vow. The father. The father. Mm-hmm. He had the right to tell the son-in-law no or yea. Mm-hmm. Right? So he the one brought Leah unto Jacob. Yeah. Right? And when Jacob discovered that it was Leah in the morning, what did he say? Why have you beguiled me? Yeah. Uh-huh. Did not I serve thee for Rachel? You, we agreed on this. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Say why? What's the reason? Go ahead. And Laban said, Now this is the reason. Look. Uh huh. It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Hold this spot. Romans uh, 13. He said, In my country, it's not to be done like that. It's not to be done to give the younger before the firstborn. See, everybody got ways that they do things. Mm-hmm. And they cook. This is their culture or they yes, custom. Their right. custom is to get the oldest in marriage first. Mm-hmm. So he, he was respecting the, their custom. Right? And what happened was he, and he ultimately made Jacob succumb to the custom of the land. Right? But listen what, well, listen what the Bible going to tell you. Pick it up in verse 1. Romans 13 and 1. Hearken to the scripture. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. So is Laban, was Laban higher than Jacob? Yeah. He, he employed him. Right? Go ahead. He made an agreement. Go ahead. For there is no power but of Elohim. You see that? No power but of the Most High Yah. Go ahead. And the powers that are obtained, or the, excuse me, and the powers that be are ordained by Yah. Okay. So do you th- is this an accident? No. Nah. Let's just think logically. If, let, if Jacob just had Rachel... How hard would it be for him to come up with the 12 tribes? It's way harder than, yeah. than, than doing it with two women, right? Yeah. And coming up with 12 tribes between two. Mm-hmm. Right? 12, one woman got to have 12 tribes? Come on now. Yeah. The most I got mercy. But go ahead. People don't like to think about stuff like that. Two. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resist, resisteth the ordinance of Yah. So what if Jacob would have said, nah, I, ain't, I, I refuse, I rebuke, I, I'm not taking her to be my wife. You would have been going against the Most High. Yeah, going against the will of the Most High is for him to produce the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm-hmm. This is the way the Most High had it play out. Go ahead. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm-hmm. For rulers are not terror to good works, mm-hmm. but to the evil. Mm-hmm. Without then not be afraid of the power, do that which is good. And thou shalt have praise of the same. True. Go ahead. For he is the minister of Yah to do thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Why? For he beareth not the sword in vain. Yes. For he is the minister of Yah, a a avenger a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Keep going. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscious sake. That's right. Be subject to the high power, not only because they have the ability to... To uh, make it hard on you, but for your conscience sake. Go ahead. For this cause, pay ye tribute also. This is what we're reading is. He said, for this reason, 
Pay tribute also. Go For ahead. They are Elohim's ministers uh -huh. attending continually upon this very thing. Right. Last verse. We wait all that to read this. Go Render ahead. therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Custom to whom custom. Mm, that's powerful. So what did Laban say? This is the custom. This is the custom of our land. Mm -hmm. We got to get the, the oldest before the first, before the mm -hmm. younger. Mm-hmm. It's not to be done, so it's not our custom or our tradition to get a younger in marriage before the firstborn. Mm -hmm. So you got to respect the game, Jacob. Yep. You got to take that L. Huh? Yeah. Custom to whom custom. Mm -hmm. Fear to whom fear and honor to whom honor. Yeah, so if you were, if you were captive in somebody else's land, guess what you got to do? Honor their custom. Honor their custom. See, today in Israel, we're rebellious against the customs. And that's why we don't want to be having peace. Hmm. If, you, if we were doing it right, we'd still be in our own land. Yeah. Coming up with our own, obeying our own customs mm -hmm. and tradition. But this is from the Most High. You got to deal with the customs of these people. And deal with it honorably. That's all you got to do. To, to a good man, the evil people know it's not a threat. So let's go back to Genesis 29. Custom to whom custom. Render custom to whom custom. Mm -hmm. So look what he said. Verse 26. And Laban said, it must not be done. It must, it must, excuse me. It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. So that, you got to do, you got to render custom to whom custom. Mm -hmm. So agreement was still made. Was it not? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. 27. Fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou serve me, serve with me, yet seven, uh, seven other years. Right, so fulfill Another Rachel's seven. week, and I'll, get, I'll go on and give it to you. Mm -hmm. so now it's in order, right? Now it's in order according to the customs right. of the land. Right. Because remember, if you go to verse 1, he not in his own land. Mm -hmm. He in the land of the people of the east. So you got to respect the game. You can't come up here with nothing and then you're going to all of a sudden uproot the traditions and the customs. They don't work like that. All you got to do is submit. The most high take care of the rest. Go ahead. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, the wife also. Look at that. How they came together yet? Hmm. But they already married. Yes, sir. They already considered husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. They haven't even laid together. So how do sex equal marriage? Sex don't equal marriage. The covenant or the agreement equal marriage. Sex can see, uh, seals the marriage. Sex is the token. Hmm? Go ahead. 29. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. Mm -hmm. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and he served with him yet seven other years. See that? No sweat. I'm going to go and do this because I love this girl. Huh? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a light thing. In other words, he didn't let that little setback. Right? He didn't let that little setback stop him. He persevered. So he said he served other years. Go ahead. 31. And when the Most High saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Right, so that's good. I didn't want all that. But in other words, you can see that they're married before the intercourse. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis 2. Twenty through twenty-five. Then we'll read a little more out of the law, and then we'll get another story, and then we'll go over this covenant. Yes, we do with the Most High permit. Verse twenty. Welcome to the scripture. And Adam gave names to all cattle, mm -hmm. and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. But for Adam. That was not found to help me for him. Look what the wife is called. A help me. Mm -hmm. Not a sex slave. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Right? A help me. Somebody to help him. 
build his kingdom. Right? Go ahead. And Yahuwah Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm -hmm. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh instead thereof. By one of my bone, flesh and my flesh. Mm -hmm. Right, go ahead. And the rib which Yahuwah Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Right. So he took it out of, he went inside of me. What happened? And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Right. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. See that? That's the rules of engagement. We're going to see she was called his wife. Before they even laid together. They, this is my wife. Verse 20, where we at? 24? Yeah. Go ahead. 25. We just finished 24. Yeah, go ahead. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Mm hmm Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. The man and who? Hold on. The man and who? And his wife. Hmm. They hadn't even laid together yet. Mm. Now go ahead into the third chapter. One, the, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahuwah Elohim had made. Right. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Mm -hmm. And what she do? And gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. She gave it to who? Her husband with her and he did eat. They married. Without us even having witness of them laying together yet. They haven't known each other yet. Yeah. Mm hmm Let's see if the Most High honored this. Drop down to uh, verse 8. Go ahead. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah Elohim amongst the trees mm -hmm. of the garden. Right. And Yahuwah called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? <laughs> hast, thou eaten, hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Right. And the man said, The woman who thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So we're going to drop down to 17. I just let him read it a little bit, because I like the animation. All right, It was pretty good. Keep it growing. Servant 17. 17. Yes, sir. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Now, this is the most high. Mm -hmm. He said to Adam, what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you hearkened to who? The voice of thy wife. They're married. Yes. They haven't even knew each other yet. If so, we don't have a record in the Bible, so we got to go with what the Bible say. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. He said, because you hearken unto the voice of thy wife. Go ahead. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Okay, now, go into chapter 4. They got their punishment. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Chapter 4, verse 1. Hearken to the scripture. And Adam knew Eve. Who is that? That's the man and the woman. I mean, just read the rest Husband of Husband and the wife. His no. wife, my okay, bad. Okay, that's good. That's afterwards. That's right. Look at all that other stuff that's passed on. We just now, in the fourth chapter, we just now getting record that mm -hmm. they knew each other. Mm -hmm. What they already was considered husband and wife. Mm -hmm. They was married before they knew each other. Mm -hmm. The sex don't make you married. Sex don't equal marriage. Because that's what people teach. Try to use Jacob. It was a custom of the land. They had an agreement. You got to respect the game. Right? Sometimes in life, you take losses. It probably wasn't a loss for Jake, but I'm just saying. They don't change stuff. But yeah. Go ahead. 
And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, That's, I have gotten a man from the Most High. You see that? Mm -hmm. Who just now get into the portion where they uh, laid together. Genesis 19. I'm going to do two verses, or th maybe three. This is verse 8. This is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. With the gay husbands. Yeah. <laughs> Just listen to what the Bible going to explain to us. So Behold they, now, mm -hmm. I have two daughters which have not known man. Right, because, the, you know, all of the Sodomites of the city came and surrounded Lot's house. And Lot is like, no, uh, don't do so weakly. Oh, what verse? Oh, Genesis 19. Oh, 19 and 8. Yeah, Genesis 19, verse 8. So he, he Lot is pleading with the men because they want to come in. They want to know the two men. He's like, no, don't do so wickedly. Right now he uh, uh, explains, I got two daughters. They have not known man. Right, so listen, it's two daughters. That's all, he, that's all we got record of. Two daughters that have what? Not known man. So that means they haven't slept with men. They virgins. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Let me, I pray you, Bring them out unto you, and do ye yet to them as is good in your eyes. This is much better than uh, sodomy or mm -hmm. homosexuality. Right. All right, go ahead. Only unto these men do nothing. Right. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Right, and it's, it's his, his job to protect, protect them. Him. Pretty yep. much almost at all costs. Yeah. Right, let's drop down to verse 14, because they're getting ready to destroy the city. And uh, the angels are asking a lot, do you have anybody else in the city? If you do, if you do uh, uh, destroy this thing. Go ahead. And Lot went out and spake to his sons-in-law. To his which, who? His sons-in-law. Okay. Which married his daughters and said. And he only got the two daughters. Yep. Right? They married his daughters. The son-in-law married his daughters. But they have never known men. They haven't never known each other, I mean. Mm -hmm. They haven't slept together. But he still, they still his son-in-law. Mm -hmm. They're still husband and wife. They they're still considered married. Look, read that again. Which, and Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters. Married his first. Which married his daughters. Go ahead. And said, up, get ye out of this place, for the Most High will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that is mocked unto his sons-in-law. You see that? So just in case people think we, it's more than those two daughters, read verse 15. And when the morning arose, did the angels hasten Lot and saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters. How many daughters? Two daughters. Yeah, they, that's all. They, they, them the same two. Uh huh. They had the son-in-laws that hadn't laid together yet, but they already was considered married. So you can see, once again, that sex don't equal marriage. You just out there fulfilling lust. That's all you're doing. You finished that verse? Mm hmm Okay. Let's go uh, Leviticus 19. I was going to give y'all a break and skip some scripture, but just not the season for giving. Verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter mm -hmm. to cause her to be a whore. Lest wow. the land fall to whoredom mm -hmm. and the land become full of wickedness. So what would make what would make her a whore? Sleeping around. Land without marriage. Right. But if she's sleeping, if she sleep with somebody in equal sex, how could she be a whore? Hmm? It's fornication. Exactly. It's whoredom. Let's go further. Leviticus 21. Leviticus 21, we're going to do verse 7. Matter of fact, pick it up at 1, just to see. 21 and 1. Uh -huh. And Yah said unto Moses, Speak unto the priest of the sons of Aaron, 
and say unto them. What you want me to tell them? There shall, none, there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, mm -hmm. but for his kin that is nearer to him that is for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother and for his sister, a virgin. That's, that's good. Now, I just wanted to really verse one to show that we're dealing with the priest. Verse oh. seven. Go ahead. Verse seven. Mm -hmm. They shall not take a wife that is a whore. Who is they? The priest, the right? Mm -hmm. They should not take a wife that is Th what? That is a whore. How can she be a whore if she has sex and she's married? The same question keeps coming up. You consider the whore when you have sex without being married, right? Sex don't make you married. Go ahead. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane. Neither shall they take a woman that is put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his Elohim. Verse 9, go ahead. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. You see that? She profaneth her father. Now, it's just not adding up. She had sex in her father's house before. She got married. Disobedient that should equal marriage. marriage. Mm -hmm. Huh? According to, you know, a lot of this teaching that's going on. That should equal marriage. No? Mm. That's, what we, that's what we've been believing. We got to pay attention to detail, don't we? People best be out here talking. We got to check behind this stuff. Go ahead. What, what were you still at now? She shall be burnt with fire. That was, now, that was a punishment. Yep. Consequence. Right? Because the name, once again, you done, you've messed up the father's name. It's just like, man, you ain't teach your daughter another play. We priest up in this. What is you doing? Mm -hmm. Why are you giving somebody a reason to talk down on your name? 13. Go ahead. 13 and 14. We out of here. 13. And he shall take a wife in her virginity. A, a widow or a divorced woman or profane or a harlot, these shall he not take. But he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. All right. Is Yeshua a priest? Mm hmm. Hmm? Yeah. So you think he could take Israel? Uh, why he bear record that they played the harlot? You think he could take them to wife? No. That's why he had to make a new covenant. He taking Chase version. When Paul came through and he was saying, I espouse you to the Lord as a Chase version. Because he a priest. He got to stick to the law. He can't take, be sitting up here taking no harlots. You got to be a virgin, spouse of the most high. Yeah. So, in other words, you can't commit spiritual fornication or no other type of spiritual whoredom against the most high. And that's where we get to the form of idolatry. That's what idolatry is, spiritually. Spiritual fornication. This thing go deeper. Right? Mm -hmm. So, on the, on the surface, which is the physical level, and on the spiritual level, too. Yep. Same rules apply. All right? And it don't change. First uh, Corinthians six and nine. So that was a punishment. Burn them. Imagine you a priest. You don't caught your door. You got a burner. Mm. That's how serious it is. But nowadays it's normal. Mm. It's the way of the world. If you ain't doing this, if you ain't defile, you weird. Yep. If you ain't defile, you a joke. Now how much of a joke is that? It's bad out here. What I First Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians six. Scriptures. On top. Verse nine. Verse nine. Yes. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Facts. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators. Mm -hmm. Nor idolaters. Now how do you get to be a fornicator? Sex equal marriage. We're in a new book now. Sex with no marriage or covenant. Sex with no covenant. Mm -hmm. It's fornication. Hmm. But don't be deceived. 
You see how dangerous that teaching is? Yeah. We teaching. Hmm. What? Fornication. No wit you are no witnesses. No paperwork. Hmm. I'm just saying, how do we know you married? Ain't no proof. It's real at least had paperwork. Had signed a bill of divorce, man. We got others, we're gonna read in the park for in a minute. Paperwork, agreement. We need proof, man. We need witnesses. No backroom deal. We got to do better. Give that if you got if you big enough to marry, give her your give that person your name. Mm-hmm. Got to give them your name. If they don't think it's highly enough for you to give you your name, you need to leave them alone. Mm-hmm. You so you deserve at least deserve that, huh? You can't sell yourself super short. You already selling yourself all the way short. You gotta do better. You gotta expect more. Hmm? Where, where, where are you at? We at the bottom of nine. Go ahead. Nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, mm-hmm. nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of Yah. That's 11. That was 10. Read to 11. 11. And such were some of you, but yes. ye are washed, You're washed, but ye are sanctified, uh-huh. but ye are justified in the name of our Adonai Yeshua, or Jesus, and by the spirit of our Elohim. That's right. So you got to be clean. The word is what does that for you. Revelation 22 and 14. And then we're going to go to this apocrypha. And read another uh, situation. The Most High is going to judge whoremongers and adulterers. Fornicators, same as whoremongers. No cup, you just out there loose. What verse? 14? Hearken to the scripture. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Yes. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Facts. Go ahead. For without are dogs. So on the outside of the gate or the outside of the city or the outside of the kingdom or dogs. And sorcerers. Uh huh. And whoremongers. And who? And whoremongers. He already told you, judging. This your position. Outside of the kingdom. Go ahead. And murderers and you, idolaters. Look at that. You in there with murderers. And whosoever loveth and make it the lie. And whosoever loveth and make it a lie. That's what you got to look forward to. In the same position with the sorcerer, the murderer, the idolater, which that's spiritual fornication. So he got the spiritual and the physical. Mm-hmm. Whoremonger, that's the... That's the physical. In the same spot with everybody who love and make it a lie. We got to get on our job. We got to do better. Let's go to this apoc. We're going to go to the book of Tobit. We're going to read three chapters. I ain't going to make it long. So we got to get this story. It goes right along with what we're talking about. And then we'll look at these uh, steps to make. At least some of the main steps. Because that's what a marriage is, a covenant or an agreement. People trying to skip out on the agreement. Well, I don't want to give up nothing. Mm. You already don't pay no dowry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you don't want to give your name either. He says you need to get out of here. You hear me? I can't get your name on. My father can't get no money. Listen. This is not a good situation for either one of us. Let's go ahead and cut ties and repent, and we'll move on. All right, we're doing bad out here. That's what I'm saying. The book of Tobit, let me know what you got. We're going to start at chapter 3, and we're going to read to 7 and 8. 7 and 8? Yeah, 7 and 8. Let me see if I can pull it up.
You got it up there? Let me know when you got it up on the screen, Amy. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right. Nah, I don't got it. On okay, all right. That's okay. Seven. Yes. It came to pass the same day. What happened? That in Egbertain, a city of Media Sarah, the daughter of Ragiel, mm -hmm. was also reproached by her father's maid. Right. So they in captivity. Israel in captivity in one of the Medes, the cities of the Medes. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got Ragiel and you got his daughter, who is what? What's her name? Sarah? Mm -hmm. And she suffering reproach. Right. Go ahead. Eight. Because. Because that she had been married to seven husbands. Now listen, this is why she suffered a reproach. She been married to seven husbands. Whom married, as, right? Go ahead. Whom Asmodeus, the evil spirit, had killed mm -hmm. before they had lain with her. Right. What? What? Before what? They, they had, had been killed before they had laid with her. All seven of those husbands died. Before they slept together, yet and still. They consider married. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. So what verse is that? There's eight. We Go in ahead. the middle of eight. Go ahead. Does thou not know, said they, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Thou hast already seven husbands. Neither was thou named after any of them. Look at that. She ain't getting now now one of their names. But this is this is why she's suffering reproach. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, man, it's, it's, in other words, it's like you the one that's doing something wrong, mm -hmm. right? So we mocking you. Just like uh, Samuel's, uh, Samuel's mom, how the lady was uh, mocking her, right? Because she hadn't had any, any children, right? So you got the same type of thing going yeah. on. Sarah is the black widow. <laughs> Pretty much. That's what's going on. Yeah. So let's go over. Let's, we ain't going to get all of it. We're going to follow the story into the sixth chapter. Mm -hmm. Follow the story into chapter six. We're going to pick it up at verse 15. So the two main characters in the story is Sarah, the one with uh, the, the, the Regiel's daughter. Uh -huh. Now we're going to get Tobias. Mm -hmm. Tobias. Right? Which is Tobias' son. Which is Tobias' son. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to read one verse in chapter 6, and then we're going to drop down to chapter 7 and read 1 through 15. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's pick it up. Let's pick it up in verse 15. 15. Verse 15, 15, chapter 6 and verse 15. Harker to the script. Then the angel said unto him, what Does saying? thou not remember the precepts which thy father gave thee? Right, your father then gave you some righteous precepts. Do yeah. you remember them? Yeah. That thou shouldest marry a wife of thine own kindred. Look, this is the same thing like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yep. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. They all followed this pattern. Yep. Yeah. So he's he not just making up. This is their custom. Yeah, this is their custom. Mm -hmm. Right, this is the, the custom or the tradition. Wherefore, hear me, O oh my brother. And remember, it's even more prevalent because they're in captivity. Yeah. They're in a the city of the Medes. Mm -hmm. So you know he don't want his son marrying no median, median uh, no Mede, no, 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 no parents, and none of them ites. Mm -hmm. No ites. Right. Right. Unless there's an Israel in front. Right. Yeah. So this is the because it's the custom of the people. But go ahead. Wherefore, hear me, O oh my brother. Listen for up. she shall be given to thee, shall be given thee to wife. And make thou no reckoning of the evil spirit, for this same night shall she be given thee in marriage. Right. So he, in other words, he got wind, you know, about Sarah and how she had seven husbands and the evil spirit killed each and every one of them before they was uh, laid together. Mm -hmm. Yet still they was considered husband and wife. Mm -hmm. So he said, don't you remember what your, and, and Sarah and Tobias is of the same kindred, which we're going to find out. Right. So they're the same kindred. The angel said, don't you remember what your father said? You need to marry somebody that's within your kindred. Mm -hmm. Right? And he said, this is what's going to happen. Sarah going to be given to you the wife. Don't yeah. even worry about them evil spirits that slew all the rest of them husbands. We're going to give you, she's going to be given to you, to wife. You right? better complete the cup. Exactly. So let's see how this process played out. What verse you have? 16. Go ahead. And when thou shalt come into the marriage chamber... Thou shalt take the ashes of perfume. No, I don't want that. Oh. I said chapter 7, because they oh, don't have that seven. script. Yeah, they don't right. have that script. Seven. Back, uh, chapter 7 and 1. Yeah. 7 and 1. And when they were come to Ecbain, they came to the house of Ragiel. Mm -hmm. Then that's her father, remember? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Sarah met them. Mm -hmm. And after they had saluted one another, she brought them into the house. Then said Ragiel to Etna, his wife. What is he saying? How like this is young... 
how like is this young man to Toby, my cousin? Right, say this this young man remind me of Toby, my cousin. And Reggie L asked them. So Reggie L and Toby his cousin. Yeah. Right. So Tobias kind of put uh, Reggie L in the mind frame of Toby. And Toby got a good reputation. Yeah. And a good name. Mm -hmm. He considered honorable. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing for him to be compared to his father, Tobias. Right. Go ahead. I mean, uh, uh, Tobias to be compared to his father, Toby. Toby. Yeah. yeah. And Go Reggie L asked them, where are you from, brethren? You're like, where are you from, son? Go ahead. To whom they said, we are the sons of Nephtalium. Mm hmm which are captives in Nineveh. So they're all out of the tribe of Neptali, right? Go ahead. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, they, they've been scattered. Go ahead. Then he said to them, mm -hmm. do you know Tobit, our kinsman? I said, yeah, you know Tobit? And From Neptali, you know Tobit then? Yeah. Go ahead. And they said, we know him. Then said he, is he in good health? I said, is he doing good? Is he doing well? Go ahead. And they said, he is both alive and in good health. He's alive and well, yes. Tobias said, he is my father. What? For real? <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead. Remember, he said, Raphael said, you kind of remind, remind me of him. You remind me of Now, Tobias Toby. come and clean. Yeah, that's my father. Go yeah. ahead. Then Raphael leaped up and kissed him and wept. Happy. And Joy. blessed him and yes. said unto him, Thou yes. art the son of an honest and a good man. You see, now, do you see how important that name a good is? Good name. Yes, sir. He said, You are son of an honest and good man. Mm -hmm. All right? But when he had heard that Toby was blind, he was sorrowful and wept. Right. Go ahead. And likewise, Edna, his wife, and Sarah, his daughter, wept. Moreover, they entertained them carefully, and after they, they killed a ram of the flock. And they set a store of the meat on the table. Then said Tobias to Raphael, mm -hmm. Brother Azarius, speak of those things of which thou didst talk in the way. Yeah. And let, it, let this business be dispatched. Excuse me. Go ahead. So he communicated the matter to Ragiel, and Ragiel said to Tobias, "Eat and drink and be and be merry, mm -hmm. for it is meet that thou should shouldest marry my daughter." Look at that. He said, "Eat, drink, and be merry. It's, it's good, good. Yeah. that you should marry my daughter." Why? Nevertheless, he know yeah. he know that his daughter will be in good hands, right? Because of because Toby. he know he got good teaching, good upbringing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And he know pretty much has been passed on. Mm -hmm. So he don't have a problem with giving his daughter to somebody that's honorable, uh, maybe got a little integrity, right? Right. He not giving his. He know I'm not giving my daughter to a scrub, right? Twenty first. Watch out for exactly. like me. Somebody that honor the Most High. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I will declare unto thee the truth. I'm gonna tell. You, I gotta tell you the truth though first before you even come into this. Uh, uh, make this agreement, right? So now, the father's coming clean. Go ahead. Now I, I have given my daughter into marriage <laughs> to to seven men. Yeah. Now, it's, yeah, it, it's pretty much verbatim how he said it too. Go, yeah. go ahead. Who, who died that night? Now listen, they, 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 they came you. into unto her, but I just, just gotta warn you. You know, but go ahead. Nevertheless, for the present, uh, for the present, be merry. But Tobias said, I will eat nothing here till we agree and swear one to another. Till we what? Agree and swear one to another. Agree and swear. Coming to a covenant. Exactly. Coming covenant. to a covenant. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Regiel said, then take her from, take her this, f take her from henceforth according to the manner for thou art her cousin, and she is thine, and the merciful, Yah will give you good success in all things. See that? She prayed. Yeah. Most high answered her prayer. And the father proved. It's a court. It's in line. Mm -hmm. It's in line. He can't, he, he having this conversation with the father. And they are the same kindred. This is mm -hmm. all going together beautifully. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. 13. And he's uh, uh, honorable. Go ahead. Then he called his daughter Sarah. And she came to her father. And he took her by the hand, and he gave her to be wife to Tobias, you saying, see that? wow. We, we fell a long way from this, didn't we? Yeah. Go this, ahead and tell the truth. This, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. He about to get a good game. <laughs> yes. Man. Behold, take her, uh, and gave her to be the wife to Tobias, saying, behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. Look at that. Take her after the law of Moses. 
Uh-huh. And he blessed. Uh-huh. Go ahead. And called Edna his wife and took paper mm-hmm. and Hold did. on for a minute. <laughs> Hold on for a minute. What? Marriage certificate. Yeah, he called Edna his wife. Right. And took paper. So we got witnesses. We got a contract a on top of the agreement. Yeah. And did write an instrument of covenant and Hold sealed it. Hold on for it. a minute. And he wrote what? And wrote an instrument of covenant and sealed it. The agreement. A marriage contract. A yeah. Or a marriage certificate. Mm-hmm. We got witnesses. We got the certificate. We got the father agreeing. This yeah. is blessed. Then they began to eat. Cause remember, he said, "I ain't gonna eat until we yeah, agree." Right. Yeah. Now we got the the, the meal, which yeah. is like one of the final steps in ancient covenant making. Mm-hmm. Which in our day we would call that a reception. Right. Which is at the end of the wedding. Right. But go ahead. Then they began to eat. After Raguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, "Sister, prepare another chamber and bring her in thither." Which then, which when she had done as, which when she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither, and she wept as she received the tears of her daughter, and said unto her, mm-hmm. "Be of good comfort, my daughter. Right. The Most High of heaven and earth give thee joy for this for the, this thy sorrow. All that Be, sorrow you had with them seven husbands. Yeah. The Most High is t- taking away their reproach and giving you joy. And finna give you some joy. Go ahead. Be of good comfort, my daughter. Mm-hmm. And when they had and look what type of gift the most high gave. He didn't give us just anything. A good man. He gave, yeah. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. At eight and one. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. And as he went, he remembered the words of Raphael and took the ashes of the perfumes and put the heart and the liver of the fish thereupon and made a smoke therewith. Yeah. Let me see. Did you see the part where they uh they prayed? Uh I might have skipped over. That's eight, chapter eight. Yeah, this eight. You don't have eight? No, don't worry about it then. Anyway, after they came together, they prayed. And the most I uh granted their request. I forgot to put that in there. But just the whole story went together and showed you that before they laid together, they was considered married. And he was such a good man with that. Like, once they finished, once they consummated the marriage, they prayed to the most high. Yeah. Verse giving 15. thanks. Huh? Yeah, verse 15. Go ahead. Then Regiel praised the most high and said, O most high, thou art worthy to be praised uh, with all pure and all holy praise. Therefore, let thy saints praise thee with all thy creatures, and let thine angels and thine elect praise thee forever. Thou art to be praised, for thou have made me joyful. And that is not come to me which I suspected but thou hast dealt with us according to thy great mercy. That's good. That's good. So let's go over to the um, to the covenant making document. The ancient covenant making document. It's all about the covenant. That's what marriage is. The steps of this thing. People took covenant serious back in the day. It's not like today. Mm-hmm. All right? We're just going to read uh, a few of these steps. Where you at? Let me know what you got. I can work with it. I'm going to let you read it all then. So we're going to read uh, right here to right there. And then we're going to move. What you got up there, Amy? Yeah, we want the eight steps. You got them? Okay, read this, uh, Nehemiah. Steps of covenant making. Steps of covenant making. From the historical evidence, several steps of covenant making emerge as coming in ancient times. Look at that. We got steps to this thing. He said it, and, and it's from, from way back, the ancient time. Uh-huh. And it was common. To take these steps, right? To right. make the covenant official. Mm-hmm. Right? So you ain't just jumping into nothing. Right. All right, go ahead. Ancient covenants were always very solemn and serious agreements. It's, it's serious. It's not a joke. Not to be taken lightly. When people gave a word, that's all they had. All right? 
And they, they take that to the death. They're not trying to transgress their word. It's just now this new way, our word is not. That's where we get the term word is bond. Mm -hmm. Right now it's not. People word a joke. You got to check on them and check behind them now. They just yeah. to make sure. It's almost like uh, dealing with children. Yeah. Huh? You got to make sure that they going to come through and do what they said they were going to do. It's more common for people to flake out on you mm -hmm. nowadays than it is for somebody to come through with their word. Mm -hmm. We don't feel a long way. Right, go ahead. Animal sacrifices were almost always included. We see that with, with, with covenant making, animal sacrifices were almost always included. So let's just, the question is, why would that be? The blood. Because it's the blood. The blood does, it's what? It's sealing the mm -hmm. agreement. In other words, what you're saying is, this is a blood covenant. Mm -hmm. We're linking ourselves to this agreement by blood. So the only way out of it is blood shed. It's how serious it is. So I got to give you my word and back it by blood shed. Yep. That's my way out. You can't tell me that's not a serious matter. It is. Right, but go ahead. And that's the same thing with the marriage. That's why you take a, a, a daughter that's a virgin, a wife that's a virgin, and when you come into her, the, uh, the sheets, we, uh, the, token. Have, the token of her virginity, right? You have blood on her sheet. That's the seal. That's the sign. That's the token that the covenant was sealed. In other words, still a blood covenant. Mm -hmm. So the only way out, you out of it is by what? Blood. blood. Mm -hmm. That's why the most I hate divorce. So how he let Israel out the covenant, out the first covenant? Blood spew. Blood. Exactly. Blood spew. When he divorced Israel, the, the ten tribes, he kicked them out of their land. Mm -hmm. How did he kick them out of their land? By war. Death. Right, Captain? That's a sign. That's how he divorced you. Mm -hmm. Turn his face from you. Mm -hmm. I wrote you a bill of the divorcement. This is how it's executed. By the shedding of blood. Since you broke it, it's your blood that's got to be spilled. All right, go ahead. Covenants were accompanied. By the promise of blessings. Now, let's, 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 hold on, my bad. But just think about that logically. If that's the case, if the covenant is that serious, how would the most high let uh, sex uh, be the one that make the covenant official? Hmm. hmm? How could sex equal marriage if it's that serious? No. It don't. It ain't a joke. Sex without a covenant, that's fornication. Sex with a covenant, you seal the marriage, seal the deal. That's it, now you're married, for real. Go ahead. What, what step you on? I missed it. Uh, we still on one. Okay. Uh, covenants were accompanied uh, by the promise of blessings for obedience and the warning of cur curses for disobedience. And you can see that all these steps of covenant making, you can see these all through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Right before we made the covenant official, we it's some things we got to go over. One of the things was let's see the blessings and the cursing. In other words, when you marry somebody, let's see what you got to offer versus what I got to offer. Can we deal with each other? Like, is it worth it? Right? You might not can deal with their family. Their family might be a curse to you. Mm -hmm. Hmm? They might not can deal with you, vice versa. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just jump into something. The most I remember, he told you, fruitful and multiply. Go ahead and read. In pagan societies, the participants almost always invoke their false gods as witnesses to secure the agreement. Now, the most high is our witness, though. When you come to that marriage, they say you're standing before God, don't they? Mm -hmm. As a witness. He's standing there as a witness to what? I need to hear your words. Because mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is bound you to your words. Yeah. yeah. All right, go ahead. Finally, a sign of the covenant would usually accompany the sealing of the agreement. That's right. So the sign of the marriage was the tokens of, of the virginity. And that would seal the what? The agreement. The agreement. Seal the deal. It's official. Go ahead. From the historical information, we see the following eight steps commonly used in ancient covenant ceremonies. The pre-ceremony actions. See? The selection of the covenant representatives. The selection of the covenant representatives. And that would be, the, in, in, in the case of a marriage, that would be a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. In the case of just a normal type covenant, let's just deal with, let's just say Abraham and the Most High. Mm -hmm. Remember, they entered into a covenant with each right. other. 
Those are the covenant representatives. Mm -hmm. right? But go ahead. And the cutting of the covenant sacrifice. Right. That's the animal. Right. Or it's also called when you lay with the virgin, the, 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 uh, the, the blood is, is mm -hmm. called, we call it cut the covenant. Mm -hmm. Right. Go ahead. The exchange of robes, mm -hmm. belts, and weapons. The walk unto death. Look at that. We exchanging something. We giving up something. See, yep. back, in the, back in the old days, when, when men had their they, they they belt, their girdle around their waist, what they have on their side? Their weapon, mm -hmm. right? Their sword, right? So if, if somebody is giving that to you, you, look how deep this is. It's basically you becoming me. The two of us is becoming one. Yeah. For a man to give up his sword, his means I of protection. My life. Exactly. And that's what the wife and the husband are saying to each other. The robe, robe is very significant. Yeah. Hmm? Under the New Testament, the scripture tell you to put on, put on your shoe. How can you put him, probably can you put on a man? But the idea is just like you putting on a robe, like the robe of righteousness, right? You, in other words, you putting on his name. Mm -hmm. And now with that name, you put on his characteristics. Mm -hmm. So now with that characteristic, what he did was elevate you from a lower state to be like him. He's not lowering down to you, but I'm elevating you. Okay. I'm taking you from the bottom to the top. That's what's up. I'm elevating you. That's why I give you my name. Now, when you get this name, listen here. Don't mess hear, it up. Hear me, real, hear, hear me real, real clearly. Do not Maybe. take this name in vain. Right. Because the way out of it is by blood. Mm -hmm. This is how serious the marriage is. He married Israel. This is what they agreed to. A, a normal marriage follow a similar pattern. Ladies, don't take that man's name in vain. You need to make sure he ain't taking his own name in vain first. Be mm -hmm. fruitful and multiple. Let's consider some stuff. If he's taking his name in vain, you need to move around. Right? I'm oh, for real. What you think? What you going to do? The name already polluted. This is what you think of yourself. You join yourself to something that's polluted. Oh, so what's that going to equal? Pollution. Exactly. So how you escape the pollutions of the world? Through the knowledge of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. That's Bob. Go ahead. The pronouncements of blessings and curses. The pronouncement of blessings and curses. See, the you need to know. You need to do some investigation. Mm -hmm. How many times you been to jail? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying. We need to see if we're going to be able to get some employment around. You got your own business. Something. <laughs> own business. Something, right? How we gonna eat? In other words, yeah, right. Because if you if you don't got no way means for us to eat, how we gonna bring children? Right. How we gonna be fruitfully multiply? Nobody ain't asking questions now. Hmm. You been with that, you been with that man seven months. You don't know his last name. Nah. I'm just saying it's a joke. It's funny, but this stuff happened in real life. Yeah. Hmm. What if he leave you with a, get you pregnant and leave you? You know, you made it hard for somebody to feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This stuff happened. We, we in bad shape. But people don't take the covenant seriously. That's why. We don't do no investigation. The most I told you, consider the cost before you jump into this thing. You say, no, I'm going to jump into it anyway. Whatever happened, just happened. You always complaining. Mm -hmm. You always coming around with black eyes. You should have knew that but first, the first time. Hmm? Out of 17 girlfriends, he beat 13. What you think was going to happen? He got good odds. <laughs> All right? You were probably not going to escape. I'm just saying. Yeah. Go ahead. The seal of the covenant. And brother, Mark. you should have known she slashed ties before you got with her. Man. Boy, I try to tell you that. Mm -hmm. If she always running around with that song, I'll bust the windows out your car. Right. <laughs> Listen, you need to bust a move. You know? <laughs> what you think going to happen to your car? Uh, she gonna wait till you get that freshest one, the freshest ride you ever had. Yeah. Right? He's gonna take you that off. gonna leave me and get a bean. Yeah. <laughs> I was with you and you in the Toyota. Bust, I'm busting out everything. Right? In other words, we gotta take this stuff more serious. <laughs> we gotta be fruitful. We gotta do this stuff right. Yeah, it's real talk. Right? Mm -hmm. People coming, children coming up behind us. We are, if we already done messed it up, let's not mess it up for them. Yeah. At least teach them about uh, how to example. get it right a little bit. That's right. Because they're going to come to you. Mm -hmm. I'm say, no. With their kids. Yeah. Can you take care of them? say, no, I told you. Any, 
I only ain't like the little ugly boy. But anyway, <laughs> let's get <keep> keep rolling. <laughs> I didn't approve it. You eloped. Go ahead. Right. You know, nobody. Yeah. You couldn't find him for two days. You was eloping. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's your, that's your, that's your issue. You know, ran to Vegas. And yeah, came back. exactly. I'm a Williams now. <laughs> All Go right. The Go ahead. Ex- the exchange of names. It's funny, y'all. But, it, you know, yeah. this stuff be happening for real. It's real life, it's, though. It's, a- <laughs> it's misery. Go ahead. Misery love company. Man. Come the on. The exchange of names. It's what? The exchange of names. This is part of the covenant making. Mm-hmm. And why when you go and sign that document, you give up your name. Mm-hmm. See, ladies be, they, they be trying to have dashes and yeah. hyphens in yeah. their name. No, it's not. No. Your father ain't here. You hear me? Yeah. Your father's not here. No, he got his own house. Yeah. All right, it's mine. And if the dude lets you do that, you, you already know what kind of man you got. Yeah. I'm Jones hyphen Smith. J- yeah, J- Jada Pinky Smith. Stop, <laughs> stop playing <laughs> this wheel. No, your last name is Johnson. Yeah. 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 No longer, you know, you're not Johnson and Smith. You got to pick. Man, anyway, let's keep rolling. This the Covenant feel, Meal. Man. Covenant Meal, that's reception. Like, you remember you said, yeah. I ain't going to eat until we agree. Right, that's what Toby said. Yep. Yep. Covenant this Meal. Is, Go ahead. Not every. Not every ancient covenant included all of these steps, but many were included. Right. So, for the bill, uh, uh, not all of the covenants had all eight of these steps, but as long as they have some of them, mm-hmm. right, many of them was included in every covenant. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. A brief review of these eight steps will give us a basic understanding of Yah's covenant with man. That's the truth. Basic review. Right. We don't, we don't even have time to do that. We just jumping it. I do. Mm-hmm. And we passed. We ain't even doing that. Right? We just laying, laying in bed. Right? That's all we doing. We ain't got no covenant. No agreement. We don't, you ain't talk about future together. If you want chill. N- nothing. What's your mom, dad, last name? You know what the sad thing is? What's your favorite color? I don't know. I think pink. What? <laughs> you think? This is where we at with it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's ridiculous. This is where we at. All right, you finished that. What else you got? Go up, go up to, uh, to the next huh? one. It says eight steps of covenant making. Yeah, did you read that? Yeah, go up to one. Go up to All one. Right, one. The pre ceremony. Hold on, let them, let them get there. Overview? You just got over. You see where it says overview in there? One yeah, I'll be at okay. overview, yeah. So let's read that. The pre-ceremony actions. Pre-ceremony, before the ceremony. In a typical ancient covenant, before the covenant was enacted, the two parties would discuss the terms, conditions, the promises of blessing, and the warning of curses related to the agreement. <laughs> Who doing that? Nobody. Just beforehand. Yeshua told us this. Let me show you. Let's go hold this spot. Let's go Luke 14. Been out of the scriptures a long time. We're gonna go right now, Luke 14. Twenty-six. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and his wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So this is sure. Some, some call Jesus, no problem, whatever you want to say. Well, he, what he's saying is, if any man come to me, basically, if you don't consider the cost, you can't be my disciple. In other words, you can't enter into a covenant with me. This ain't no light thing. And now he's going to give them an example. So before we establish a covenant together, you better consider it's some stuff you're going to have to give up. Keep rolling. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's right. It's some, it's some persecution that you're going to have to go through. Right. If you want to be my disciple, my follower, my student, listen, you got, it's some stuff you got to give up. Some things might be holding you back. Mm-hmm. Some things you got that's driving a wedge between me and you. And when you come into a cup, you agree with me. You didn't agree with the wedge. Mm-hmm. All right? Listen, that's what he letting them know. You got to get rid of that. Go ahead. 28. For which of you intending to build a tower 
Sit if not down first and count it the cost. Well, we could say today, majority. Yeah. He said, who, now who would do this? Somebody, you got somebody intending to build a tower. They just going to go up there, get some materials and start building. Right. They ain't going to consider the cost. Now, logically, who does that? No That's one. Yeah. But when we approach covenants and marriage, this is how we come at it. Yeah. What's, your, what's your last name again? Oh, oh yeah, 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 I knew that. Uh-huh. That type of thing. Go ahead. And count it the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Count the cost. Pre-ceremony action. Mm. You need to know something about that person. They need, right. they need to know about you. Is this worth it? Mm-hmm. Can I build a long-standing life with you? What things you got that I can't deal with? What blessings and curses come along with it? What's, what's in it for me? If we multiply, how are we going to uh, take divide, care of this? Yeah. yeah. So if we come together, we're going to multiply or divide. I mean, I need to get your mind right. That's how you say it nowadays. Mm. Who would do that? Nobody. Go ahead. Let's happily... After he have laid the foundation and it is not able to finish it. That's all- how marriage is now. Yeah. 50% or divorce. more in and divorce. I think it's like 70 something. Oh, yeah, I, just, I was really was trying to lowball it and give him nah, my opportunity. To- so he said, who would Let's- build a tower and not consider the cost? You saw it now, now you done start building, you done laid the foundation, time done went on. And you not be able to finish because mm-hmm. you didn't count the cost. Mm-hmm. Some stuff that some pain that you could have avoided beforehand mm-hmm. had you sat down, slowed down, and co- counted the cost. You could have saved yourself a lot of trouble and agony. Go ahead. All that behold it begin to mock him. I knew that wasn't gonna. I tried to tell you. Mm-hmm. You were just. So gone by the looks. You know how people make bets at people marriage? How long you think they're going to last? <laughs> yes. Exactly. I give them I got two four years. months. Go ahead. 30. Mm-hmm. Saying, what? this man began to build and was not able to finish. Go ahead. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? What king would do that? You got to make major decisions. You, your whole kingdom can be put in jeopardy. Mm-hmm. Your whole kingdom is up in the air if you don't calculate the cost appropriately. Right? So you got a lot of people's hands, I mean, lives in your hand. Mm-hmm. It's the same way with marriage. You're not just marrying that person, you're marrying their family. Right? That's why the American way is what? They, they, hate, they hate the, uh, the in laws. Yeah. Right? They, they hate the in laws because they don't even know them. Right? They don't even know him for the most part. Mm-hmm. Count the cost. Consider. That person is a product of them in laws that you hate. Mm. Hmm? Go ahead. 32. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassade, an ambassade mm-hmm. and desire if. Conditions of peace. That's right. If we can't fight you and take you down, I, I need to uh, make an agreement of peace. But in other words, he considered the cost and he did the best thing for the kingdom. All right, go ahead. So likewise, whoever he be of you that forsake, if not all that he have, he cannot be my disciple. That's the truth. Why? So, you got to get rid of all them idols. Idolatry is spiritual fornication. You, know, you need to consider if you can get rid of all the miters. Because if you can't get rid of all the miters, you can't come to me. You can't be my disciple. Because you're in there into agreement with me, not them idols. When you're in into agreement with me, I got blessings, my own blessings that I want to give you. And I got my own punishment in case you don't do what's required. You need to know that. Consider the cause. Marriage is the same way. Come on. 34, salt is good. Oh, you finished 33? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Let's go back to that uh, to the insert. And I'm going to let y'all go. We're going to read the rest of the It sentence. says, 
as a part Hold of this. Hold on for a minute. I heard somebody laugh. <clears throat> I thought I said some sniggling and giggling. 30 more scriptures. <laughs> Tell them where you at, Nehemiah. Uh, well, I'm going to start back at the top. Okay. Uh, the first bullet point. In a typical ancient covenant, before the covenant was enacted, the two parties would discuss the terms, conditions, the promises of the blessing, and the warning of curses related to the agreement. As a part of this step, they would weigh the advantages and disadvantages of the treaty and evaluate whether it was a worthwhile opportunity. So they would consider the cost and see if this worth my while. They right. would spend time counting the cost of entering into the covenant. How long? Two weeks? In nah, this? They, they would spend time, right? Because yeah. they oh, it's a serious back in the ancient days. Mm -hmm. So they need to spend time and see, is this going to be worth my while? Counting the costs. All right, go ahead. In essence, they would assess whether the personal sacrifice demanded by the pack will return equal or greater blessings. Yeah. It had to be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. How it applies to us today. When Yah initiated a covenant with Abraham, a period of time preceded the actual covenant ceremony recorded in Genesis 15. Mm -hmm. And this pre-ceremony interaction between Yah and Abraham is recorded in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. In this passage, Yah proposed the terms, conditions, and promises. And Abraham's role was to count the cost and to respond in faith and obedience. You see that? Go ahead. Abraham had decided if he... Decide, had to decide if the promises of the blessings were worth the sacrifice of leaving his homeland. Mm. Abraham had to choose. Remember, he called him out of his land. Yep. So Abraham had to see if this worth it or not. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Abraham had to choose between the security of living near his family or going to a strange and a familiar land in which he was an alien. Now, y'all require Abraham to respond to the invitation prior to the covenant ceremony. That's right. And Yah told Abraham that if he would leave his country, leave his family, and go to the land that Yah would show him, then he would be blessed. All right. So is that worth it? Yeah. Is me is. being blessed by the Most High worth me leaving my family? This is the same thing Yeshua said. Yep. What we just read. Yeah, if you can. Is this worth me leaving my family, my country, my country? Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. So he was counting the cost. And see, is this going to return equal or greater gains? Right. All right, go to the next step. To the next step? Yeah. Next step you is the selection it. of the covenant representatives mm -hmm. and the cutting of covenant. Yes. In the typical ancient covenants, before the ceremony began, a covenant representative was chosen on behalf of each group engaged in the pact. Mm -hmm. And these representatives entered at the covenant on behalf of everyone in their group. Two would actually make the covenant that would bind the entire group to the expectations of the covenant agreement. Right, like Moses did Israel. Right. right. As the ceremony started, the representatives would take the animal sacrifice and cut it down the middle from the head to the tail. And the two pieces of the sacrifice were laid open with the bloody side facing upward. Mm -hmm. Since the animals were usually quite large, a significant amount of blood would escape flowing toward the center of the two pieces of the sacrifice. Now, this is key because this is what's going to seal the covenant. Mm -hmm. Just think about Exodus 24 when he took the blood and he sprinkled it on the people to seal it. But they're cutting the, cut, they're cutting the animals, laying them open, mm -hmm. right? It's bloody. So what they're saying uh, symbolically is if I break this covenant, because remember, they serious agreement. Mm -hmm. If I break this covenant, let what happened to this animal happen, happen to, to me and even right. more. Right. It's how serious it is, because this is my way out, blood. Right. All right, that's what it's pointing to. Go ahead. The representatives would then stand near the sacrifice. Now, if you can't handle that, you already should have counted the cost previously, before we made it to this step. Right, right. You say, no. Yeah. Now, then, you know, back out while you can. Yeah. But once we make it to this point. You locked in. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. How it applies to us today. In the covenant with Abraham, the two covenant representatives uh, were the Most High and Abraham. The Most High taking the form of a smoking oven and a flaming torch passed through the pieces of the covenant that's, sacrifice. Now, that's, that's Genesis 15. Right? So imagine the Most High, what he's saying. He's saying, if I don't keep the cup, my, bar, my part of the cup, mm -hmm. let what happened to these animals happen to me and more. So this is how serious the word is. Mm -hmm. 
He gave his word. Mm-hmm. And he, God of gods. And he put himself on a line like that. You think yeah. he ain't going to keep it? Right. So if you break it, you think I'm going to let you get off scot-free? No. This is a serious business. Mm-hmm. You need to think about this beforehand. Right, let's drop down to, to verse to, to, to the third part. I gotta rush and get them. Through. All right, the third part is mm-hmm. the exchanging of robes, belts, and weapons. So you can read this whole thing. I'll uh, see if I can give you the website uh, once we get ready to close out. But if you want to read the whole thing, it, it, it's on the website. It's on the internet. Right, go ahead. It says in many cases the parties to the covenant would exchange robes, belts, weapons, or some other token as a symbol. Of desire, of their desire to no longer live independently, but as one. You hear that? Read that portion again. In many cases, the parties to the covenant would exchange robes, belts, weapons, or some other token as a symbol of their desire to no longer live independently, but as one. You see that? So most of the time nowadays, when you enter into a marriage, you exchange rings, and this is what you're symbolizing. It's a token that what? That you live no longer independently, but as one. Mm-hmm. And the exchange of robes symbolizes the putting on of each other and becoming one. It says that I give you all that I have. Look at what it's saying. I give you all that I have. And you give me all that you are. Look at that. Beautiful. Huh? It implies that I give you all my assets and I take all your liabilities. I heard somebody right now. Hold on. <laughs> all of my assets. Mm-hmm. I got to take all your liabilities. <laughs> This is serious business. It signifies... Well, you got to count the cost. This is how serious it is, right? It signifies a new position, a new character, and a new authority. Wow. Mm-hmm. And what? A new name. Yeah. If you... Go ahead. Uh, the belt of the girdle was a part of the armor, and it was, it was what held the weapons in place, and it's symbolic of a man's strength. The exchanging of the belts is symbolic of giving your covenant partner your strengths and taking on his weakness. And weapons are used to defeat enemies. Thus, the exchange of weapons symbolizes the responsibility and the power to defeat the other's enemy. This deep. Mm-hmm. The symbolism is amazing. Yeah. All right, go ahead. As it applies to how it applies to us today. As our Elohim, as Elohim and Yeshua took off his robe, as Yeshua took off his robe of glory and came to earth. Clothing himself in the likeness of humanity, by so doing, he made the wonderful royal robe of righteousness available to us. Mm. By his work on the cross, Yeshua Jesus took upon himself our robe of filthy rags, which has been defiled by our sin and independent living. Right. He who know he who knew no sin became sin, so that he might nail our iniquity to the cross. Yeah. What else? Get to the next one. The no, walk look. unto death. Mm-hmm. I keep going. Yeah, keep going. Go to the next. Uh, yes, that's the next step. Okay, all right. Yeah. The walk unto death is right. the next step four. Uh, it says, next to the next to express how seriously each party of the covenant viewed their part of the uh, agreement, they will participate in a walk unto death hmm. by walking around the pieces of the sacrifice animal. Some have said that they will walk in the form of a figure eight. Infinity. The, yeah, infinity, yep. Yeah. As the two representatives walk between the two pieces of the sacrifice and faced each other, they would look to heaven and say something like this. Do so to me as has been done to this animal if I break this covenant. And if I fail to keep this covenant, may I die even as this animal has died. Right. Now, how many times we done heard this in dealing with marriage covenant? To and the severity do of it. To right? death do us part. That's what he's saying. That's where, it com- that's where the term coming from. Mm-hmm. To death do us part. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. In this step, each representative pledged to his fulfill his obligation to the covenant or die trying. Look after, at that. Go ahead. And after this step, there was no escape or no way out, and both parties would take a vow unto death in order to fulfill their side of the pact. That's it. And Let's go ahead. How it applies to us today. Oh, no, you don't have to read that part. Okay. Let's go to the next one. The next step would be five, the pronouncement of blessings and curses. Mm-hmm. And during the ancient covenant ceremony, while the two parties stood in the middle of the sacrifice, each would pronounce aloud the terms of the covenant. Now, remember, each covenant don't have to have every single one of these steps. Just but some most of them. covenants had majority of them. Yeah. You know what you got? Some of them. Go ahead. They would declare the blessings for the obedience and the curses for disobedience. And you can see that how uh, y'all did that with Israel. 
Deuteronomy. He had the uh the Levites stand on uh he had half the tribe stand on Mount Ebal and half of them stand on Mount Gerizim and pronounce blessings and cursing. Huh? Uh -huh. No. Yeah. Go ahead. The blessings would often include abundant harvests, prosperity, good health, numerous children. The curses would often include retaliation. So somebody that's provi a provider. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Curses would often include retaliation by the injured party, destruction, disease, poverty, famine, and defeat at the hands of their enemies. Mm. In ancient pagan cultures, the parties uh, to the covenant would invoke their many false deities who had been called upon to witness the ceremony to visit them with the blessings of the curses. Right. And the next step says the seal of the covenant mark. The seal of the, or the covenant mark. Go ahead. In a typical ancient covenant, after the animal was sacrificed, the walk unto death completed, and the blessings and curses stated the two parties would seal the agreement with a special sign or token. Hmm. This special became sign or token. Just think about the, uh, the token of virginity. Mm -hmm. Right? Go ahead. This became the mark of the covenant that reminded both the parties of the solemn pact that bound them together as one. Mm -hmm. If the agreement enacted was, was a blood covenant, then the mark would normally involve the shedding of blood by the two covenant partners. Mm -hmm. A normal way that the covenant partners in the pagan world would seal the covenant was to drink wine, commingle with blood from each representative. After cutting their wrist, forearm, or the leg, each representative would catch a few drops of blood with a cup containing wine, and they would drink it as a mixture, as a way to finalize the covenant. And remember, the Jewish law prohibited the drinking of blood. Therefore, biblical covenants were often sealed with the drinking of wine, which symbolized blood. Mm -hmm. So look, even the pagans, yep. even the pagans took covenant serious yep. back in the day. Sound they like mind change, frame the change, too. Yep. All right, go ahead. This sounds like Freemasonry, too. Yeah. Um, you want me to go to the next step? Yeah, go to the next. Next step would be the exchange of the names. Mm, we all can realize that one, right? Yeah. Recognize that one. Yeah. Exchanging of the names. The exchange of the names was the next step in ancient covenant making. Let me get that hyphen in my name. Go ahead. <laughs> Clay Trumbull in his book, The Blood Covenant, writes, To exchange names, therefore, is to establish some participation in one another's being. You see that? Mm-hmm. It's like you becoming them. This is symbolic of you becoming yeah. them. Who they are. Go ahead. Hence, as we may suppose, came the well not universal oriental practice of interweaving the names of one's deity with one's name as a symbolic evidence of one's covenant union with the deity, the blood covenant or the blood union ideal at the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. The exchange of names was much more than external external symbol, it implied the exchange of personality, character, reputation, essence, and authority. Yeah, because you should have already overviewed that person. Mm -hmm. So it symbolized the two becoming one. Exactly. The next step would be the covenant meal. Yes. The final the step. The fun part. Everybody liked that part, right? Yeah. yeah. fun part. Yeah. Reception. <laughs> yes. I don't make the wedding, but I'll be at the reception. <laughs> Go All right. The final step in ancient covenant making was the celebration of the covenant meal. And by this point, the parties had agreed upon the covenant. The promises were made and all of the exchanges were executed. Yeah. It was now time to celebrate the pact that had been sealed. Now it's time to celebrate. All the covenant been sealed. Everything is Man, done. Soul train line. Yes. Go the ahead. covenant meal was a time of great celebration. The meal included bread and wine, which represented the body and the blood of covenant partners. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the wine was mixed with blood. At other times, the wine merely represented the blood. As they celebrated the meal, they made their concluding declaration to live as one. And by eating the bread and drinking the wine, the covenant partners were expressing for the final time their vows to live for each other. Now, so do, do this seem more like what makes a marriage? Or does having sex seem more like what makes a man? This does. Exactly. Most time people have sex, they ain't even considering no kind of cost nah, or nothing. Uh -uh. Hmm? Mm -mm. But this requires you to think. Yeah. Hmm? That's what a that's what that's the distinguishment between a man and a beast. A beast acts on impulse. A man thinks. He uses ration and reason. That's why the Bible compared me and the beast. Because if you're that type of man that act out ration and reason and appetite, 
you're going to be bent over all the time, mm. low. Yeah. But if you're a man that's act out rationally, you're going to be upright, standing up, mm. like God made you, right? That's how it is. You finish that? After this, the two become known as one. After this, no longer individuals, two become one. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Yes. such and such. Last name jo Johnson. Yeah. All right, right. <laughs> so that's how it is. All right, so let's go one last place. Genesis 1. So as you can see, time and time again, the Bible uh, let us know that sex don't equal marriage. That's a defiled bed. Sex without marriage is a defiled bed. Do you want to give the name of the website she was at? For the people doing Oh, uh, yeah. You can, you can give it to them right now. The CTP.org. The C is in Charlie, T is in Tom, P is in Peter. Org. CTP.org. The CTP.org. You say what, Amy? Is she going to put it up on the web? On the, uh, All right. Online? Yeah. Now, we should have a totally different view, a more righteous view. On the covenant of marriage. One and twenty six. Genesis one and twenty six. Genesis one and twenty six. You better sheets. Hearken to the scripture. And Yah said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So how is man supposed to be? Righteous. Yes, sir. But bright. Mm hmm. Right? Mm hmm You made in the image of the most high. Mm hmm Go ahead. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Right. So the most high created man in his own image, in the image of the most high created he him. So you know what the most high possessed right here at this point what we're reading about? What do he possess? Wisdom. He possessed wisdom in the beginning. That's yeah. how he made man. Yeah. After his image. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to be like the most high. Yeah. You're supposed to do things with, with thought, with knowledge, with understanding. You're supposed to understand what you're doing. I just jump into stuff. Right. Count the cost. Count the cost. Mm -hmm. Consider. Right? Go ahead. 28. And the most high blessed them. And Elohim said unto them. What did he say? Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful first. Galatians 5, fruits of the spirit. Get that in your repertoire first. Mm -hmm. Once you got these things under control, then multiply. Mm -hmm. And do what? And replenish the earth. This is how I want the earth replenished. With righteousness. With righteousness mm -hmm. after a fruitful manner. After my image. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Once we do this, it's all good. Yeah. Go ahead. And subdue it. Mm -hmm. And have dominion over the fish of the sea yes. and over the fowl of the air and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And enjoy your blessing. Enjoy your blessing. So once again, marriage or a defiled bed, you decide now, right? You can see. Marriage or a defiled bed, sex does not equal marriage. I hope we got something from the lesson in your sure name. And I thank you for your time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.